system. I'm playing with house money at this point. I was a walk-on in college. I was fourth round pick. Like I wasn't even supposed to be here. What's the best part about being starting quarterback in the NFL? I really had no plan B. Like I didn't want to do anything else. Coming to the NFL, I'm like, my time's coming around. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think it would come this quickly, but Josh got fired. And so then I just lay there in bed for two hours in the weight room. And he's like, hey, I'm calling the plays and you're starting. On my first start, did not go well. Basically went back to the bench and had to just simmer in it and sit with the failure basically it's hard enough in the nfl to just give yourself a chance desire to win and and that really bleeds into all aspects of your life i so badly want to be on the field i go in every day i'm like i'm going to be perfect and when you're not it, it you know it pisses me off and yeah. um but that's you know it's part of the job and something i, I do enjoy doing Walk up in the light. yeah i'm really am talking my shit like I'm really him, oh God. Walk up in this light. Yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit light. Germany. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to The Rush. It's your boy, Max Crosby. Got my brother, Brogan Roback, Darian Terrell, Dustin Creel in the house. Today, we have a very special guest. The man himself, Farva, the stash, leader of the pack, our boy, Aiden O'Connell. Welcome, brother. Thank hey, you. <laughs> How's the offseason been, though, bro? It's been great. Good. Yeah, it's good. It's good to get a little time off. But, I mean, like like we said, it's being in Vegas versus the Midwest is we love being here the whole time. Yeah. You know, um, we got a good spot that, that we like, me and my wife, and it's been great. Nice. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. and obviously, Max can attest, the facility is crazy. It's, I mean, the weather plus the facility, like, how would you want to go? Which is kind of rare with a quarterback. Yeah. Because normally those guys go to their quarterback coaches or right. do what they do in the offseason. So you're here. I was here. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Working with uh Alex. Working with Alex. Our boy Alex. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love Alex. How's how's your Beatless. experience Beatless been working with him? It's been awesome. He uh I mean it hurts, but it's 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 useful. Like you get off the table and can feel a difference and then um it sucks he's been traveling a little bit, but we've gotten some good time together and I also got to know him too and then, I mean he's been doing it for forever, world renowned for what he does, so yeah. um yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, I mean, he got to meet uh, he got to meet Alex. These guys, nice. Yeah, yeah, he's he's the best, bro. He gets my body right. Yeah, every single time, every single time. What's like the uh, biggest thing you've learned from him? Obviously, he's got all the experience in the world. Um, but is there anything specific that you've taken from him? That you've yeah, obviously his experience with with Tom, but also with with everybody else. I think just the holistic athlete and looking at like like it's not just a you do this for some part of the day and then you do this like it it takes really a lot. It takes everything to to compete at the highest level. And he saw that I mean, he's with the Patriots when they were winning um, all that they won. And so he saw what it took to win at that, at that juncture. And yeah. so, yeah, just, just really pour in what you need to pour into, not just a couple hours and check a box and move on with the rest of your day. Yeah. yeah. Is, uh, obviously, you know, the whole world got to see you move to number 12. Is that, uh, Tom Brady inspired or what was, what was the story behind that? So it, it really wasn't, uh, I was 12 for, I think for a little bit in the little league. Um, but I, I just didn't want to be four anymore. I, uh, I didn't pick four. I was actually nine and then Tyree wanted nine. So they gave nine to Tyree. That was like in the first week I was here last year. And then they gave me four and I was, you know, as a rookie, you just kind of do what you're told. And so I was cool with it. And then when the offseason in, I'm like, this is, felt to me, this is Derek's number. He wore it for that long. And he's a franchise leader and all this yeah. stuff. It felt disrespectful. So yeah. I, I just wanted to kind of give that back to him. And yeah. So that's ultimate respect right there. It yeah. is. No question. No, that is, that's sweet. So did you have, uh, you've been working with any of the guys in the offseason? They stay in here like receiver wise. They've been playing yeah. with you and just yeah, building threw, on that chemistry. I threw with Trey a bunch. Uh, it sucks. We can't use the ball at the facility. That's probably the worst part. So we got to go to a park. Yep. Yeah. Um, but there's a park r right by my house. And I worked with, I threw with Trey Tucker like three times a week. Jacoby will come out a little bit. Tay as well. Um, Christian Wilkerson. So a, a few guys that will come out and throw us a little bit. Yeah. Um, and now that we started, Obviously, back up officially with the team, been able to throw out the facility. But yeah, I worked with Trey a bunch this offseason. You expect a big season from him? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he he had he's, an awesome year last year. He's a special player. Obviously, he he's he's um what they're doing down in Miami is kind of obviously reminds people of that. And so his speed, like when you when you when you can run like that, you can open a lot of things up. So he's he's a fun guy to to throw to and also get to know because he's uh, we're rookies together. You kind of go through a lot of the same things together. Yep. The growing pains. Uh, yeah. You can say that. Everyone can, yeah, yeah. Everyone can attest to that. That rookie year in the NFL, it's a little, a little bit different. Just you can add, did you get? To, did you watch any of the Tom Brady roast? I didn't. No, I haven't watched it yet. He got roasted yeah. quite a bit too. On, I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good job. Though. He's got grilled. Yeah, a few times. <laughs> I heard. I, I heard it was awesome, but I haven't it was watched awesome. it. Yet. Oh, it was unreal. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was cool. Has, does he share any war stories with you, like with Tom back in the day? Just like nuggets of advice. I know talking about the holistic approach and take care of your body, but just I'm sure he's had lots of conversations with Tom over the years. Does he pass any of that on to you? Yeah, yeah. For, for sure. I mean, he's not um, – obviously, he's been doing – like I said, he's been doing it for a while, so – um he, i mean he gives <clears throat> when i ask him and i don't ask he gives me advice about you know what what he went through and it's you know it's again it's i'm playing at the same level that he was helping tom all those years i'm playing in the nfl and so he knows what it takes to succeed in the nfl and he's seen a lot of guys uh come and go so i'm trying to take you know his words and um use them how i can and um you know obviously try to stick around in the league hell yeah hell yeah what is your like what's your um opinion you know a lot of people talk about nowadays you know the game is changing mobile quarterbacks things like that is that something that motivates you here and you know guys you know talk about yeah you need to be this Patrick Mahomes build yeah and, oh this is the new wave and things like that do you necessarily agree with that or disagree with it you know I think um it depends I think that's what I think the biggest thing that I've seen um is that it depends on the system you're in it depends on the situation depends on the coach the players around you um, so I don't, I don't think it's a one size fits all kind of thing. I definitely, you know, the, the game has changed in, in that way. And, um, I'm definitely more of an old, old school quarterback and standing yeah. in the pocket. And so, um, I, you know, I'm not oblivious to that. I understand that that's true, but I think, um, at the end of the day, playing quarterback is about throwing the football and making good decisions. And so yeah. I just try to use my strengths as best I can chip away at, at my weaknesses. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I definitely use those motivation as well. I think, uh, people are going to say whatever they want and you know that's their opinion and they can say what they want but yeah. um you know i've been just just trying to do what i i know i can do for a long time and have that propel me yeah. to continue yeah. to do that. most scrutinized position man. yeah by far yeah. it's by nothing far. new though you no it's the whole it is life. because it's a it's at the highest level now um yeah. but it's you know i think my dad told me this from like a young age what what you do like what happens to you uh, when you're younger kind of prepares you for the future and so i I went through a bunch of stuff in high school with football, trying to get on the field, and the same thing in college. And yep. um, now it, it's helped me now that I'm I'm um, been lucky to play in, in my rookie year last year. And so those things at the time I didn't understand why they were happening when I was in high school and in college. But now that you know they I've grown from them and, and can learn from those situations. What would you say is the biggest lesson from all those experiences of being doubted, never been given what you thought was your rightful opportunity? You know what what propelled you then? For me, I definitely have seen that. Uh, when when God wants me to be in the field, I'm going to be, and when he do, when he when he doesn't, I'm definitely not going to be. And so there's been times where I'm like, I so badly want to be on the field, um, and think I deserve to be in the field and want to be, and and I wasn't. And then there was times where I'm like, I don't think I'm ready to be on the field. Um, I I don't think I'm there yet, and I'm kind not in the field. field. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's it's um those experiences, like I said, they're really hard at the time, but I think. And anything, and I think it's not just unique to me, but anything you can look back and appreciate those and, and take um, what you can from them and take the good and the bad. And I think also as, as time goes on, you remember the good parts. Yeah. Um, and so I, I do, as as hard as the times were, um, I, I normally just remember the good parts and the sure. things that used to maybe make me cry, make me laugh. Warmer summer days are calling. Fuel up for them with factors, no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors Fresh, Never Frozen Meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great-lasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this May with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash rush50 and use code rush50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. What is like one thing in this off season, or maybe there's a couple, but like what, what was your main focus on in this off season that you wanted to get better at that's gonna help you just be a better player, better person, um, you know, heading into the next season? Yeah, I think um, in all my off seasons prior to this, obviously in my first off season in the NFL, I was like, you play in your bowl game, you'd have like eight days off and go back to school yeah. and start with the team. And so I think I got to kind of start from the foundation and build myself back up and, um, you know, obviously I, I took a couple of weeks off at the season, but got right back into training. And so you can, I, I really felt like I had all these months where I could build a foundation 
um, for my body, for watching film, for um, all the, like I said, all the aspects that go into playing quarterback and, and also get perspective about how lucky I was to play last year. The, the situation I got put in was hard, but it was also an opportunity that a lot of fourth round picks don't get in their first year. And so um, I think, again, as you get away from it, it was, it was pretty stressful during the season, but the off season was um, a big time to reflect and be grateful. Um, and, and again, try to, you know, learn from the mistakes I made and continue to grow on the positive things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What was your, uh, what was your initial reaction? Um, you know, obviously when McDaniels got fired and everything and AP announced like right away that you were going to be the starter, what was your initial reaction? Was it more nerves or just like, oh shit, here, you know, here we go. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of felt like something may happen, obviously, after, you know, we had been going through some turmoil kind of early, mid midway through the season. And um, after the Lions game, I got up to, to pee at like 3 a.m. And <laughs> my wife was like, have you heard anything? And I don't, I don't even know why she's awake. And I was like, no. And she's like, well, yeah, Josh got fired. And so then I just lay there in bed for two hours just thinking. And then I went to the facility and Bo came and found me in the in the weight room and he's like, hey, I'm calling the plays and you're starting. So it was, we played the Lions on the Monday and we were playing on Sunday. It was a short week. Yeah. yeah. Um, they just got fired and I found out and it was just like there was really no time to do anything else when we were playing. Yeah. Um, the Giants, Wink as a defensive coordinator, throws a bunch at you. And so I was like, all, all this stuff piled on. Um, and so it was, it was definitely stressed out, but was excited and, you know, you, you try to um, – keep things in perspective and um at the same time you're trying to get ready for a game you're also trying to be appreciative that i'm getting to play again i had started early in the year one game but now get another opportunity so it's it's all the mix of emotions you can imagine um yeah what do you what do you think was your hardest experience your rookie year like your biggest adjustment was it a certain game or something in practice something with the coaches what was the you know the hardest hardest thing you had to do that's a great question um there was a lot but um I think t probably to the the on my first start did not go well. Um, didn't play well. Was struggled with the timing of of like they talk about just getting the ball out on time. And so, yeah. Khalil Mack had his career day against me, and um, well, just a just a bad game. Um, and then I had to sit for a few more weeks, and so but got to play, and then basically went back to the bench and had to just simmer in it and sit with the failure basically. Um, and then, th so that was, that was a really hard part. And then our Vikings game was when we scored zero points, barely could move the ball and, um, just struggled all around in that game. And so those were two moments that, um, definitely were the hardest for me, but I think they both, the, they, they kind of led to the best moment, which was the Chargers game. And, yeah. you know, I, my first start was the Chargers and we lost and I threw the interception in the end zone. And then the week before was the Vikings game. And then to get, to get to that next game, the Chargers game and us to play how we did. So as I look back, I'm like, those were two definitely the hardest, but it made the Chargers win even even sweeter. Yeah, a lot of learning in those, in like oh, yeah. those moments. That's the best time. It's so, like you said, same through your entire like history of trials that you've gone through. Like, man, you were six, uh, you were right, you were six man on the depth chart at Purdue. Oh man, I was eight. Eight. Yeah. The fact that you guys had eight quarterbacks is on. We had nine, dude. Line. <laughs> we, had, we had nine multiple times I was there, actually. Yeah, so we had five scholarship guys and four walk-ons. It is a hot commodity, though, to be a yeah. Purdue quarterback. Yes. Yeah, the legends sure. that have gone through there. For sure. Yeah. So, no, I mean, you're built for it. I think that's the best part of it. And um, and just all the chinks in your armor are just building you up to be even even better. So, I mean, we're fans. We're excited. We've been fans all year long, screaming Fargo from <laughs> across the, the mountaintops. So. Yeah, I appreciate it. Was a little more stash. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll, we'll have you guys must have to grow them out. Yeah, yeah we might have. Yeah. Yeah. So go on with mustache and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah my beard can't know. go anywhere. I, I don't know what it'll look like. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm I can do that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm too do, blonde for that. I think it just looks <laughs> trashy at my, at my rate. Diet. You can die. It would be no problem. <laughs> you do a lot of reflection, right? Yeah. That's, it sounds like you do that uh, quite often. But what's one thing when you look back at your rookie season where it's like, I wish I would have done this better, and I'm, I'm solely focused on improving that for next year when that time comes? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, I think when I took over, I, I didn't um, – the, the leadership aspect and the being a vocal act aspect was still really hard for me because I, I was a rookie and um, I was still trying to figure it out. And so to be super vocal, um, to encourage guys, to challenge guys, I think was, was definitely difficult for me. And so that's been something big time that I've reflected on and talked to Alex about. And yeah. um, just being able to be more vocal, to use my voice, to – um, you know, encourage guys, like I said, to, to just get to know my teammates even better. And I think, again, when you're a rookie, you're blinders on and trying to, 
learn the playbook really and learn learn the defense yeah. as best as possible and that's really where my focus was but to um you know to develop my the the attributes of leadership that i've i've used before in high school and in college i think that's a big thing that i've been been trying to work on and with with leadership uh, i think we just talked to uh, tay and dre about this but what is your standard that you, for your offense for when you're in the huddle what's the standard that you're instilling into that that, that, that unit yeah i think um we've been trying to do extra walkthroughs and whatever it might be this spring i think when you get in the game, the the last thing you want is to look around and be like, that guy wasn't, he didn't show up for this, or I didn't work hard enough and do the extra work that I needed to here. And so to have, to be able to look around and have trust that guys had done what they needed to prepare, um, and it's not going to be perfect every week, but mm-hmm. to know that we can at least, it's hard enough in the NFL um, to just give yourself a chance, to just go out there on Sunday and give yourself a chance to play well. And so you want to make sure you're doing the work plus some to not just give yourself a chance, but to, to have the confidence that we're going to succeed and we're going to do what we need to do um, to support the defense, special teams, whatever it might be. Oh yeah. yeah. What's, what's it been like um, learning a new system? I know Josh's system is super detailed and complex. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, we have a West coast, different style of offense coming right. in here now. What has been like the biggest learning curve for you? Yeah, I think, um, it's a little more what I what I ran in college, but I think I, w- I was super lucky. So I did six years in college, and I had one coordinator the whole time, which is unheard of. Yeah, that's, un- that that's unheard of. So yeah. I, I didn't have to learn a new offense in college at all. Um, and so I knew coming to the NFL, I'm like, my time's coming. Where I'm gonna have. Yeah. I didn't think it would come this quickly, but um, it <laughs> literally coming. Um, but so, yeah, this is obviously my second system now um, in as many years, and uh, it's different. It's definitely from, from, you know, the small things to the big – you know, philosophical beliefs of what, you know, we're, we're going to do are super different. But it's been super fun, too, because I love – that was really a, a big part of the pre-draft process. I love to learn about the different – how different teams call different things, what their strategy is, how they look at um, trying to attack different defenses or coverages or whatever it might be. And so the learning part is super fun for me. It's challenging, obviously, because these, these offenses get – and any offense get pretty complex. Yeah. Um, but that's you know it's part of the job and something I I do enjoy doing. So it's been it's been a fun off season getting to learn. Um, and yeah, like I, I now this off season the step ahead because you know last year I didn't even know any of the playbook and just trying to get drafted basically. Yeah, and now I had yeah. some time to lay a foundation, like I said before. How uh, how pumped are you for you know a full season now to be playing with and underneath you know AP? Um, obviously a guy who has extreme confidence in you. He is. Oh, he, he even said came out recently. You know, you've earned the right to go out there and and take the first sna- to take the first snap. So like, you going out there and playing with the guy like that. How much confidence does that give you? And how much are you looking forward to that? Yeah, AP is has been awesome since I took over. And even before we had in the preseason, he would talk to us. Uh, like before our first before our three preseason games, he would come and talk to the rookies. Him and our receiver coach would. And from then, I obviously I knew who he was right. um, from him playing, but um, was super well spoken and said some things that really resonated. And so I'm like, I I really like what this guy's talking about. And then when he took over, was was much of the same. And so yeah, he's been obviously to for him to take over is is a huge pressure for him to, in the middle of the season and um, him being in his young coaching career in the NFL. Never and so um, and yeah, again, he he never did it. So to do that and then to put in a rookie quarterback, it it takes. You know that's a big leap of faith, and so I I yeah. owe AP a lot, um, just to give me the opportunity that I had last year, um, and I think we're definitely kind of tied together in that of w- what happened last year. And man, he supported me from the beginning, gave me um, tidbits. He also didn't. He, he came up to me uh, on the, actually and said like, you know, I don't play quarterback. I don't know what it's like to play quarterback, but here's what I see from my position X, Y, and Z. And so I appreciate um, his honesty, his openness to be um, yeah. honest with me. Yeah. Give you give you kind of give you a view from a different lens, which is kind of right helpful too for a rookie right? quarterback. That's that's what you need. You know, yeah. you need as much as many perspectives as you can have. Because you know every position on that side of the ball, right? Receivers, you know what they're supposed to be doing. Line, you know where they're supposed to be protecting, sliding, all the above. But we don't play defense, right? right? So getting that perspective is huge. Huge. Yeah. Do you ever go into the film? Have you ever just grabbed a defensive guy? Or defensive coach and sat down and said, "Hey, teach me all you know on on defense." I in college, I I did a little bit. Okay. Um, so got to, I, you know, again, I was there for a long time in college, and so got to have good relationships with with uh, Coach English. Actually, talked a lot about with Coach English. Yeah, yeah, he and and willing to teach, yeah. which is great. Um, so yeah, I have have you know, I think I think that's one of the biggest things that we I for myself I know and probably organizations don't take advantage of is like your working so hard to strive to compete with the other side of the ball and get into their head and you have those players literally in the hallway 
mm -hmm. right next to you. And so to go and, yeah. and pick their brain and, and talk about, you know, what they see, how they view certain things is, is beneficial. Wonderful. And then speaking on the same side of the ball in like the QB room uh, with Gardner, have you guys spoke yet? You guys had any film sessions, anything along the lines of that? Yeah. So Gardner, at, right after he signed, he texted me um, and just said, excited to work with you. Um, and so he's been awesome since yeah. he's got in. He's, I was super lucky last year with Jimmy and Brian sure. to have great guys who supported me and, you know, wasn't hostile at all. They were, um, they actually did a great job of helping me both with football and, uh, you know, just keeping my mind off sure. of football sometimes when I probably was <laughs> focused on football a little too much. Um, <laughs> but they, they did a great job last year and guard. It's been all the same. It's been super fun to, to get to know him, obviously get to hear what, how he thinks about things, sure. um, as he's learning his offense as well. And so, um, he's been awesome. He's, you know, kind of you see what you get with him guard he's, dog he, yeah guard dog yeah. he's he's uh yeah. you know honest and and open and al also su like when you talk to him he's like this guy is super chill yeah, yeah. Super, yeah. like super chill easy Whatever. to talk to down to earth has other interests and not just football so he's an easy guy to, to get along with sure he's always wearing that I have I haven't been I haven't got the tour yet, but yeah. I've, so I've seen it from the outside. Yeah, yeah, let yeah. us know. He said it was his yeah. pride and joy. Like that's that Hilarious. was just for real. He literally he was I thought he was like, fucking with it. No, when he <laughs> got here, he was like so excited for it to get out there. Yeah. It was like oh, my fans almost my fans here in two days. <laughs> my fans here tomorrow. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Like, he was it. super excited. So he he's a like a down to earth guy like that. He's sure. you know, just loves and I know he's he's been loving being in Vegas, being outdoors and oh, yeah. and everything like that. So hundred percent. What's what's it like being in a in a room like that where everyone knows like it's not a it's like elephant in the room right like y'all are competition at the end of the day y'all are both fighting for the same thing does that what what is that experience like because obviously last year being a rookie you didn't expect to start right you know what i mean now you know like ap said like you're you've earned the right to be the guy to take the first snap so what is it what is it like like having an open competition with a guy who, like garner who's a great dude is it like an internal battle or is it like how's that relationship like and how how is that approach every day yeah i think it's it's not as cutthroat as people pro it's, at least in our situation not as cutthroat as people probably think it is we're like we don't talk to each other or we're trying to one up yeah. brother it's nothing like that. you yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> like college you get that i feel like a little oh bit yeah sometimes. some sometimes in college i was lucky i didn't really sure. get that in college very much yeah. um and i'm actually my closest buddies in college are all are all quarterbacks that i was with so yeah. Yeah. um but no he's been awesome me obviously we're trying to compete with each other we're trying to we got these Kahoot quizzes we're trying to compete with each other with and all the, all the stuff like that. And so um, there's competition every day and everything we do. But it's also like at the end of the day, we both have a mutual respect for I mean, my, my story is crazy. His story is crazy, too. You know, yeah. from what he um, came from and what his college experience and then what he's been able to carve out in the NFL for himself, the career. Yeah. So it really there's there's nothing but respect, I think, both ways um, for, for guys that have done it the hard way and kind of um, yeah, been able to see him do that i was a big fan of him for yeah bef long before i met him because i heard his story just the crazy stories about him and stuff so um it's been fun to get to know him oh yeah no that's dope so kind of shifting back you know you talked about you being kind of an old school style of quarterback who were like the quarterbacks you um wanted to model your game after and who were the ones you watched growing up um, and wanted to be like uh it was really just tom brady to me it was tom <laughs> yeah. that, that was really it how cool is it for him to be in the building then? Like, I know he's probably not there all the time, but yeah. here and there, have you had a chance to talk with him? Yeah, a couple times. Um, I've seen him a, a few times last year, and it was, I mean, it was crazy. You yeah. know, it was, yeah. it was meeting the guy that, you know, I try to model my game after that I was such a huge fan for for a long time. And uh, to get to hit, hear him talk about, obviously, the offense I was in last year to him talk about it he was in for 20 years whatever it was yeah um was awesome dream come true but at the same time i'm trying to you know i'm trying to make my name you know and carve carve it out for myself and so um is it's in everything that balance of trying to be reflective like we talked about and be grateful but also you know trying to tackle the task at hand and, and be the best player i can be yeah. yeah from your perspective what do you think separate separate you know separated tom from everybody else yeah i think um just his desire to win and and that really bleeds into all aspects of your life um yeah. and and i think it's for him that's that's why i loved it because you know it's a six round pick to do what he did and um you know to struggle to to find a way to start and then to come in and start and win the super bowl like um to just to see his like in the documentaries whatever to see his journey and his mindset about how he thought about things how he wanted to approach different situations and um, you know, he's obviously coached super hard. And so to see how we reacted to that. Um, and so all the on the field stuff, he's amazing. He's so accurate, so smart. 
Um, but all the, also all the off the field stuff of being, you know, able to persevere and go through the things he went through. So it, I think um, it's when you have a combination of both of those things, it's, it's special. What's up, baseball fans? Do you hate foul balls? You know, the kind, no matter how hard you scrub in the shower, bath, local lake, they still smell like a wild abundance of nacho cheese and jalapeno peppers. Well, ditch the soap and step up to the plate with Mando whole body deodorant. Personally, I like to use Mando in a lot of different places. Feet, quads, patella tendon, and all the above. Truly keeps me ready, warm, and smelling like a million bucks. Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. Comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, and free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off of your starter pack. Use code RUSH at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O dot com. You know, obviously we just talked with Dre, and obviously he's on the offensive side of the ball, as you know. Uh, but really we well. talked to him about the defense stepped up huge last year. Yeah. What is, in your opinion, what does the offensive side of the ball need to do as a unit to ne- take that next step to, you know, be a great offense in this league and get cracked into that top ten and put some points on and really propel the team? Yeah, I think um, to be able to sustain drives, I think, is, is the big thing. I think sometimes we shot ourselves in the foot. Sometimes we were lack of execution. Um, and I think, you know, we, we need explosives. We need to you know, help ourselves out and have explosive plays, but also have the discipline to sustain to sustain drives and, and move the ball down the field. And, um, you know, I think that, that definitely starts with me. And I, I obviously during the year and then reflecting on the year saw points where it's like, if I just did this, we could have had this drive, scored this points. And so just challenging myself with that, um, that, you know, it, it starts with the quarterback and, man, we have the guys, you know, we have – we're super lucky to have the guys on defense, offense – and special teams, and so um, it's about putting it together, having the belief in ourselves, and like we talked about, I think AP is doing a great job of um, honing that in. Yeah. Man, yeah. How awesome was it for you as a rookie quarterback getting thrown into the fire, being able to play and throw the ball to, in my opinion, the great, the best receiver in the game right now, Devontae. Yeah. Um, and and did he help you in that process? And just what was it like playing with him and just being able to go out there with that guy? Yeah, Devontae was supportive of me when I got there. Really, like. Um, in May when I was just trying to figure it out and really just make the team. Yeah. Um, he was coming up to me and giving me advice about different things, about how he see, he sees things and um, was just super supportive really the entire year. And for a guy that's been as successful as, as he had for a long time that really didn't need to do that for just a, a rookie quarterback, um, it meant the world to me. Um, obviously, again, with him, like a fan of his for forever, watched him work. win a lot of football games at Green Bay and – um, just guys unable to guard him. And so um, it motivates me to – I, w- I want to get to a level um, where, you know, I want to make sure I'm getting the ball to him um, where he can make plays and where he can be special and not just him but our other receivers as well. But, um, yeah, Tay from the beginning was super supportive of me. And um, as a rookie from a vet like that, from any vet, from a vet like that is, is you know, it can do a lot of things for your confidence. Absolutely. Is it like an extra level of pressure for you to make sure that you're getting him the ball just because you know he is the best in the league, one of the best to, to play that position? Yeah, I think, again, it's not unique to me, but I think the quarterback's position is to get – you want to have the, the, the perfect balance of getting the ball to the right guy in every play. Yeah. And um, sometimes plays break down and you want to get it to your best guy and sometimes it, it works out perfectly. And so – for me, it's just finding uh, the balance of, you know, when when can I really get him the ball, even if it's tight versus when is it maybe forced. Um, and that was, you know, he got double teamed a lot. Like, yeah. That's just what, what he does. He draws double teams a bunch. And that doesn't always mean that he's not open either. <laughs> and so to, to to know that and to learn that and, you know, you're trying to, when you're a rookie, you're trying to steal reps. You're trying to steal time. You, you're, you're behind the eight ball and um, you haven't got the reps you need in the off season and during the season. And so just being able to – um, as fast as I as fast as I could last year, kind of catch up to um, that standard and that level of execution was was a challenge. But yeah, like like you said, you you it's definitely in your mind when when you're playing. You want to get the ball to your best players and and let them do their thing. For sure. And then you uh you guys just got a nice steal in the draft yeah. here. 
Uh, what was your reaction to that first part? I was pumped. Yeah, I was, of course. <laughs> of course. Keep you upright as yeah, much as you yeah, can. Literally. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Brock, I haven't got to meet him yet, but um, obviously a super special player in college, yeah. dynamic. And when we have Michael already, who's in the same way, super special player and dynamic. And so um, it's going to be fun with those guys. It's just super young guys, both of them, that um, hopefully can, can make a lot of noise. Absolutely. I wonder, is he – do you – He's more of like a modern day tight end, I feel like, uh, Brock. Yeah. Is. Like, he can kind of be bumped out and be a wide receiver almost, right, with his athleticism. So it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, you kind of have like an old school grunt type with Mayer, even though he is athletic yeah. and can make plays. But I just feel like they're two completely different safety blankets, baby. Yeah. That's what you need. For real. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be awesome. What's the best part about being starting quarterback in the NFL? Oh, that's a great question. Um. It's just a, a dream come true, really, I have to yeah. say. Like, this, I really had no plan B. Like, I didn't want to do anything else. Like, it was – when I was younger, I was play baseball, and then I was a little older, I was play basketball. And then when I got to high school, it was like, all I want to do is play football. That's yeah. that's one of, what I want to do. And so, to play a game for a job, as hard as it is, as much scrutiny as you can go through, um, I try to sit back at the end of the day and be like, I'm still just playing a game. Like, yes. Yeah. And I think – I bet Max can attest, anyone that's played – at this level can attest like you talk to your friends and they're like man you're so lucky to get to, to do this and it gives you a, a fresh perspective of like this is a the dream that most of young kids have is to get to do this and so just to to realize that dream and um yeah it's it's hard there's there's stuff that comes with it a lot of bad stuff but there's also a lot of benefits and, and great things and so um to get to represent myself family um, the organization that I play for when I play is is a great privilege. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's like your uh, your main source of motivation uh, to play football? What's your main? What gets you going? What What's your purpose? What's your why? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm I'm a Christian, so definitely glorify God. I think He's put me in this position for a reason. Um, even though I didn't think I'd get to this position, really, I, I'm obviously here for a reason to give glory to His name and success and failure. I think um, that's that's definitely my number one. I think my family. Um, I know all that my parents did. I grew up one of six kids, so all they did did to pour into me, to to get me, to drive me certain places, to get me to go train, to practices, whatever it might be. Um, and and then the, to even more than that, um, to support me and tell me they're proud of me and um, that they love me. And so to give back to my family, I think is is huge. And um, I know even when I'm having a tough time and uh we might not be winning or whatever it might be i know that they're they're loving it they're loving the whole situation um they're loving that i get to do this and so to bring them joy even even if it is harder for me is is a, a privilege for me um and so yeah just from uh, for um my faith obviously my family and then um my wife as well to be able to support her and uh, she's been with me through really all the craziness um i met her in college and started dating and we mm -hmm. we were married before college is over and so she's she's really seen me through a lot of the the crazy stuff that's happened that's good yeah. but if that's your why what's uh what makes you tick you seem like a very nice mellow human being right but you gotta have dog in you to be able to be a quarterback in the nfl and be a high competitor what makes you tick yeah i think just being a perfectionist um and when when you play football you literally can't be perfect and mm -hmm. so i'm in a that being a perfectionist and being a, in something that you can't be perfect is is a recipe for frustration. Yeah. And so the, a lot there is a lot of frustration. There's um, a lot of things that um, are hard. Like I I want to be perfect and I want to go. In, it's been something I've I've had to work on because I I go in every day. I'm like I'm going to be perfect today, and when you're not, it it you know it pisses me off and um, frustrates me. And so just being able to find the balance of you know failure will happen, but try to minimize as much as possible. What I I hate things falling through the cracks, um, a lack of attention to detail, those things are the most infuriating things for me. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's it's hard when, when you're in a profession like this where sometimes that happens. What did you learn about yourself, right? There's so many highs, there's there's lows throughout the season. Um, a, I guess, how do, you, how do you manage all that, the highs and the lows, not getting too, you know, just staying even keel? Because at yeah. that position, you can't be – you can't be too fiery, right? Before the game, are you listening to a little country? What keep like? Yeah. How do you stay? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's country. It's, it's country. something chill. It's, it's a lot yeah. different. I'm sure what Max is listening oh, to. Oh, like. yeah. <laughs> He's got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chief Keith speakers, in, his speakers oh. in the, which I enjoy a little bit, but I got to yeah. I got to chill out. Yeah. 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 It's so different. You, I mean, you know, playing quarterback, like yeah. you, you're, most other guys on the team are going into the game like ready to, multiple times just 
bash their heads and bodies into other people and so and i'm not i'm like i have to yeah. be completely focused and locked in yes. not that other not that they don't but like in, in a completely different way definitely yeah. um so just be, being able to um i think again that i keep saying the perspective part of it um i'm playing with house money at this point i was a walk-on in college i was fourth round pick like i wasn't even supposed to be here so um really anything that happens from here on out is is just icing on the cake and so trying to enjoy it and um keep that perspective and that that allows that really frees me up to now i'm not going to be lazy i can work as hard as i can and try to get as much um out of this game as i can because man i wasn't supposed to be here doing it in the first place so i, right. I don't I, and again I'm, I'm still working through this but i don't have to put the pressure on myself i wasn't the number one overall pick or anything like that so i can i can go out and be like listen i'm gonna give everything i got and um you know let the, the chips fall where they may yeah, I love that. I think it's all perspective. Man. Yeah, it's all perspective at yeah. the end of the day. Like you, times can get hard in the NFL. Always, they're normally hard. always yeah. normally. Yeah, every day is a new challenge. But I think if you just look from a different lens, you realize how blessed we are to just be able to show up and be here and perform at the highest level against the best players. Um, you know, it's funny y'all <laughs> talk about the music you listen to before the games, and I've talked to y'all about this before too. But like, I think people get it skewed from an outside perspective. Like you think a quarterback would be listening to like jazz music and like super calm and whatever. But I think it's it's more than just, you know, quarterbacks. I know myself, like after games, I'm bumping music loud and whatever, but like on game day, I'm super calm. Like I'm super your body, chill. Like you like, I'll listen to some R&B. Yeah. I'll li- I swear to God, Keisha I'm Cole. my lock. Yeah, Keisha Cole. No, but I'm just at a at my most like, calm state because all the work has been put in i've done everything to an exact t so yeah. just once game day comes it's like you can't get too fired up and go into the game ah like that yeah. and you're gonna be thinking too much trying to do too much press um but you just got to be at like this calm state but people from outside you see you know a guy like me or a you know like one of the you can name linebackers in the league are flying around running their heads through walls but yeah. like you can't get to that state like a fred warner unless you're at like a complete calm state and i think that's so important and it's not it's not you know talked about enough is you know the preparation that leads to game day and the state you have to be in just to go out there and perform and give your ch- give yourself a chance to be at your best um it's not just you know what people think from the outside just like meathead jocks <laughs> running around and running through balls like, bashing your head the line yeah like before. every play you're thinking every play you have to be calm yep. you're, i'm in situations i'm putting hands and feet on people every single down and they're trying right. to do the same to me if i'm out of my mind and lose it, I can get a penalty and hurt the team. You know what I mean? It's little things like that where, you know, people, I feel like people don't really understand. Like game day is like my ultimate Zen mode. Like I'm not thinking, I'm just calm, sitting in my locker and I'm just ready to go. So the work's been put in. Yeah, the work's been put in. So you're not, you can't be out there stressing out and worried about what can't, you know, what might not happen or if you're going to miss a play, you just got to just flow. And it like, if you, if you get crazy pumped up to like the games are later in the day, like you're going to run out of energy. Like yeah. it takes so, like it takes so much energy and focus, um, and just everything out of you to play the game that yeah. if you, if you do that on the pregame, like you're not, you, you're screwed. I'm glad yeah. you just said that because I used to hate late games in college, oh. right? Because you're sitting in the hotel all day and those seem to be my worst games because I'm in hyper, right? So like, I'm just thinking, let's get out there. Let's get out there. I'll go throw the ball in the hotel, in the lobby, just to do something. Like, do you have – is that something – like, does that bother you, late games? Or is that something you had to learn to kind of figure out your day-to-day, you know, for those later games? Yeah, this – this, I mean, this year was really weird because in college you're in the hotel, like, even – because you take the bus with the team to the game, but here you drive yourself home games. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> and so I would, like – I would leave, I'd sleep at the hotel, then like go home for breakfast or something like that. And I'd be like at home during the game. I have like a game today and like having breakfast breakfast with my wife. I'm like, it's just a weird, like you have to get used to it. And it's a, it's a difference, but we're lucky that with the earliest game or the latest games we have are 515 out here because we're on the West coast time. So, um, yeah, when we played like those Monday night games on Eastern time, it's like, dude, this is all day, like all all day. day. Like it's hard. You want to think about it, but you don't want to think about it. You don't want to be in your head too much. Yes. So it's, it's a. Yeah, I'm, I haven't found that balance yet. I'm, it, I'm yeah. It's it. hard. Yeah, no, it's, you gotta you gotta really train yourself yeah. to get used to that. Because I'm I when I was younger, I would always like whatever best game I played, I'd be like, all right, I need to get to that state. What was I doing that day? How did I like? That's all I used to think. But now it's like I, I'm going to my sixth year now, and I've like learned to just instead of pressing to try to like 
get to a certain level of energy and like this that feeling you can't chase that feeling yeah you just have to be where you're at and i think that's what helped me the most like i love night games i could sit in the hotel you know we're chilling for like three hours i'm literally watching netflix and chilling yeah i'm sitting in the bed relaxing feet up that's all I'm and i'm just not yeah i'm just relaxing like if we have an early game all right i know what it is i'll watch yeah. my show before i wake up take a shower i'm ready to rock so it's just like you can't force an energy you know what i mean you just gotta just I think that's the biggest thing you'll understand as you go and put more and more time and more years in. Like, you'll understand who you are as a person right. so much more and, like, what works for you. Because what I do might not work for you. Right. And Because there's, there's some guys who, like, don't sleep I know. Uh, before it's a game. Crazy. And, like, some guys don't eat. Like, we are talking about with Andre. Like, some guys won't eat breakfast because – Cause they're, they're hungry. They want to go eat, dog. <laughs> like shit, like that. I'm like, bro, you're trying to force something that's yeah, not real. You are hungry. Just be you. Yeah, just have some and eat, yeah, eat and yeah. yeah. get right. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. have to take it too much. For real. When you're thinking like that, you're you're messing your energy up. You just have to be where your feet are. Because you wouldn't go into practice thinking like, all right, I need to eat this. Food. I need to tie my shoe. No, you're like, all right, I'm gonna go have a great practice today. Right. Do what I do every day. It's the same type of deal. It's obviously the expectations and the level of what's going on is higher, but. um it's you know very similar in a well, lot of ways. Wait, you, we and you, like you and me, have talked about multiple times, like just the day to day of like let's take let's take today. Like yeah. on Tuesday, on Wednesday, you can't like you're trying to prepare for Sunday, but you can't really think. I'm not going to think about all the stressors and the things that are going to happen on Sunday. Like I, yeah. I gotta like today on Wednesday during practice, I'm trying to be the best I can. After I'm gonna watch the film and try to like day by day just putting it together. And like you said on Sunday. It, it gives you the best chance to go out there and play well. Hundred percent. Yeah, you can't worry about Sunday on on Wednesday. You gotta you gotta just worry about Wednesday. And it sounds cliche, but I mean it's one literally one day at a time. It's gonna set you up for the best. You know, give yourself the best odds to have a great game. Yeah. And I think that's important all aspects of life. And yeah. Period. You know, it's hard. being where your feet are. Everyone's yeah. worried about tomorrow and yesterday. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like if you just stay present. Is gonna make your ne your next day a lot easier. Right. And you already know what you're doing every single day. You have your routine. I got my routine. And you know, once you get the game day, it's like, okay, now we get to have fun. Right. That's how I feel. I'm like, I finally I don't have to worry about getting screamed at by coach for hitting <laughs> you and scout team, and it was the same battle every single day. You can't strip the quarterback. I'm like, <laughs> me and Paul are screaming. Is at Jackson yeah. hit you in practice? Let's, yeah, let's a few get, times. Of course. Yeah, of course. Just for of course. Yeah. How's that go down? I mean. Hoyer Listen, I was like you said, I was a string Hoyer, dude. Hoyer Pete. <laughs> that was like my first, my first experience in the NFL was like Hoyer and Max yelling at each other. That was like what I thought the NFL was right. every day. It was so fun. Yeah. Um, it started the first day though. I just did. knew what it was gonna be. But like, it was a walk through. <laughs> a walk through. He ran a, they ran a QB sneak and a walk through, and then you know Hoyer is like, oh yeah, first day. <laughs> so I know all the quarterbacks are. They're just trying to piss me off, and of I'm, course that's and like I'm trying to piss them off. Yeah. So. Hoyer goes to do a QB sneak. I knew it's coming, so I just grabbed him from behind his jersey and pulled him back. He's like, get off me, boss. I said, what are you going to do? So what are you going to do, Hoyer? And he just had it, and it just got awkward. I'm like, the fuck out of here. I was like, we're, we're not even in pads yet. I was like, I didn't even hit you. I was like, you have no idea what's coming. He's like, all right, we'll see, we'll see. I was like, trust me, I know, we will see. The Ho we Hoyer Max is a, is a heavyweight battle like, every day, dude. It was oh, every day. Oh, you never, like, actually hit Hoyer or anything. No, so. no, it no. It was always, like, it was always petty Yeah, stuff. not accidentally. It was, it was on petty purpose. shit, and I was, like, this close. <laughs> Intentionally. Like, this is the line, and I was just, like, <laughs> dipping my toe every time. But he made me want to do that. Yeah. He, I think you guys me. both for each other. It was a perfect, like, oh, match made in heaven. Like, it was perfect, beautiful. Perfect for each other. I look forward to it every day. But I, and then Tillery took over. Yeah. Because I with my knee, oh, I couldn't know. practice as much. Oh, yeah. And then Tillery just, he took it to a different level. Of course. He just was verbally abused. Tillery took day. that so serious, he took it to the Chargers game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? High, Jerry. high football IQ on that. <laughs> I was like, Jerry, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> He's like, you about I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jerry's the funniest guy to talk to about it, too. Oh, he's my God. He's like, guy. he would try to, like, justify it. I'm like, Jerry, I'm not here. To, I'm not, right. not going to be like everybody. I'm, no, you're you're a fully bad wrong. boy. You're fully wrong. You're a bad boy. <laughs> go bad. stand by coach. And <laughs> don't just go think about what you just did. That's too funny. Yeah. Speaking of all these on-field conversations, have you and Gardner had a conversation about your guys' mustaches? And who has a better one? Uh, someone brought, I mean, he's, he's got a little beard. Like I can't grow a beard. Yeah. Literally can't grow a beard. So I would grow a beard if I could, but I can't. So this is what I it just do. doesn't like grow. You're it just doesn't go. Like I get a little patchy and it's just, it doesn't look gross. Just shave it. Yeah. There's some sponsorship. I could um, do to the outdoor. I know. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, so Beautiful. I mean, I would, I'm, I'm not like, 
exclusive mustache at all. I'm like, everyone that wants to do it, please come join me. Like, yeah, make it's it. It's a lonely it's, island over there. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You gotta <laughs> really, die and breathe. <laughs> it's yeah, for a good reason too. I mean, I look like this every day. I would, it's but. the wife thing. <laughs> it was actually her idea. Um, like back in like I know. In like 20, it was like 2021. Like I wasn't even starting. It was like my fifth year in college. I wasn't even starting. She's like, you should just grow it. And I could barely grow. I mean, I still can't grow very much. But I can grow like barely anything back then. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just kept going. I've shaved it like twice in three or four years. Oh my. Speaking of college, what was your defining game? Um, Defining game? Like Aiden O'Connell's come out show. Oh, that's a good question. Um, Eastern Michigan? Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hell no. I, was, I, I ran back to the locker room as fast as I could after that yeah. game. Like, a, like a puppy, dude. Warm, like, yeah. <laughs> just oh, watching yeah. my sweatpants. That guy left out the yard. Literally, the literally, the literally the like, just give me, give me home. Because yeah. after after we played, like, I wasn't, I was still, like, sixth or seventh on the depth chart at that point when yep. we played you guys. And the next day we do, like, young guys. And however the game went would be, like, that's how young guys would go. And every time we lost like that, it was just, like, 50 plays of young guys, like, just getting screamed at and so every time we lost like that, I'm like, we're gonna get like tomorrow's gonna be a tough day. Uh, so it was it was hard in multiple ways. But yeah, that was that was one of the low lights for sure, even though I wasn't even playing. But um we play, we beat Iowa at Iowa my my fifth year and they were ranked number two and that was that was one of the, one of my favorite wins. Yeah. yeah, that was that was great for us. That that put our t- we had a good year that year that kinda put us on the map that year. Nice. Who did y'all play in the bowl game? We played Tennessee. They lost to Tennessee, right? No, we won. You you beat Tennessee. We won, we won, oh, we won in the last second field. Oh, oh I remember that. What bowl game was it? It's Music City. So it was. Music, it was I remember. It was in that. Nashville no, against was, Tennessee. It was sold out in a bowl game like that. Like it was an away game. It was yeah. it was crazy. Probably felt good to stick yeah. it to the SEC a little bit, right? Uh, big time, of course. Yeah, big time. We we had yeah. like a couple of our best players didn't play, like didn't play in the in the game, and we still it was awesome. That's yeah. that's the wave now. All those guys are not playing in those bowl games. We played we played Matt Butler. Matt Butler was on the team, oh, and we have a picture of him like tackling me. Good. So you got bragging still, still talking to uh, Maddie Butler. Yeah, yeah, what are your thoughts on the uh, Big Ten SEC? I'm I'm Big Ten through and through, but Darian, I mean, played the Big Ten. Well, yeah, you can also say that the SEC's, the SEC's got some. SEC's got some dogs. That's what I would say about the SEC's got some. All right, then let me dogs. ask you this: What about uh, the Pac-12 teams coming into the Big Ten? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, um, it's crazy. Like I'm thinking about like UCLA going to Rutgers on a, yeah. on a like. What did we beat Rutgers? That was our highlight. <laughs> We beat all the shitty big teams. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, well, you beat us. You beat Rutgers the year before, right? And yeah. You beat Illinois Rutgers, like the next year. Yeah. We beat Rutgers, y'all, then Illinois. So we're good for the bottom barrel Big Ten teams is basically what we're telling you. We so fired up to play off. And it was rainy. Big Ten team. It was I, I knew it was my last year. We were playing Chase Young in Ohio State later in the year. So we're like about the max. I remember we talked about it a little bit. We're like, he's he'll be okay. Like, he's not going to really be a problem. Dude, and then he like forced a fumble and killed Elijah. And like, it's like. It's like, he's, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Tough. He's pretty press. good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's when he had bleached hair and was like 180. Yeah, I seen bigger dent, <laughs> or bigger knots in dental floss in, in his arms. <laughs> 242. Who are you? 242. Yeah, big body. In the program, <laughs> yeah, we got one muscle milk. It was 25 grams of protein. You got a 60 calorie goldfish and a beef jerky. So what did you guys do? For Coach Mac got us right afterwards. Also? We had dining hall and Chipotle. like the protein shakes and yeah, all that. Chicken tenders and macaroni and cheese, yep. basically. Yep. It honestly changed for me. The biggest thing in my life, this is another testament to Rachel. She uh, she started meal prepping for me. No way. Yeah, my, I met her after my redshirt freshman year, and then she, my last two years, she was whipping those cool. for me and dropping them off. Changed my whole career. Damn. Yeah, I was thin, but what you make? Was that just chicken and? It was just like simple shit. Like she would get like chicken, turkey, rice. They were good, Thank and I, and then I learned how to how to make them myself. You just throw it on a pot, whip it up, and. Yeah, learned how to. This you know, guy doesn't make that. anything. Babe, can you heat my meal up? <laughs> Babe, can you heat my I'm a meal snack? prepper. I'm a meal prepper. And yeah. She's a meal prepper. <laughs> you don't have to cook. <laughs> Way simpler. You're sitting there trying to cook shit. Can you make a bowl of cereal? <laughs> I'm trying to. You <laughs> can't make a bowl. Can't make a bowl of cereal. <laughs> Puts the milk in first. <laughs> well, shoot. Let's uh, let's bump it over to our keeping it creole segment. Pretty much like a this or that. Okay. Right. So if you had to choose one, torrential downpour game. Tundra ice cold game. Uh, ice cold. Better win last year for you guys. 63 to 21 over the Chargers or the 20 to 14 over the Chiefs? Oh. Ooh. I already know my answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chiefs. Even though it's a great Christmas present. 
I mean, I didn't complete the pass for three quarters, but it was still like. It was a black <laughs> We won. We beat the Chiefs. What a Christmas. team guy. That was his first time. Yeah. That was all. I mean, the, right, the locker room was well. awesome after the Chargers game, but after we beat the Chiefs, like that was. Christmas that was, was free. Arrow had a Christmas. That was. That was a murder. I want to ask you, free. do you, from being a quarterback, obviously, do you hate when people call you, if they ever call you like a game manager, manager or do you take that as like a compliment? It's part of the role. I think each, like, I think that, like, Cam Newton, that shows right. you, like, each game is, depends. Like, we played the Chiefs the first time. I played well. Like, through, I, I had, a, like, one of the best games of the year, and we lost. Yeah. And then I yeah. didn't play as well when we won. Like, that's just part of playing quarterback. Of you know, I'd rather take the win than me pl- not playing good every single time. Every time. Yeah. I agree. But uh, I don't you, – so you don't think game managers are slight at all? I mean, it, there's definitely a connotation to it that's, yeah. like – Definitely. These guys, they, they might think you suck and you're just out there, but it's hard to go out there. So, I, I mean, I know what it takes to go out there, so I'm – I'm go out there. I'm, yeah. I'm cool with it. It's – it took a lot to get there and then go out there. Like I said, it takes a lot during the week. So yeah. I just I feel like it's just a double edged sword. At yeah. the end of the day, you look at Tom Brady; he was the best game manager ever. Yeah, he was checking down two minute drill. He is checking it down ninety percent of the time. Yeah, he's and he was the greatest. You know what I mean? He's considered the greatest. But then you get guys like Herbert who throw the ball fifty five times a game, and then he gets hated on because like, wow, his stats are inflated. He just throws it every time. It's right. like. Well, people just can't just they're, they're mad love everything. to say yeah. something. It's okay. Yeah. Plus, you got to play within the system. Yep. You have to. Yeah, I think being a game manager, I don't think it's a slight. In my yeah. opinion. I don't either. I just hate, like you said, I hate when people approach it that way. People yeah. hate on Bro- or Mon Purdy. It's like that's crazy. What are we talking yeah, about? That's crazy. <laughs> like yeah. what is? What I when I watch Brock's wrong? film. Um, he makes throws. It's like that was he's damn phenomenal. Good. Oh yeah. yeah, Purdy can ball. If Purdy, Purdy was two ball. inches taller, I feel like people wouldn't look as at him as much of like an. I don't know if underdog is the right word, but like I feel like they don't respect his physical attributes. hundred percent, because he moves around really well, He's makes plays off schedule, and yeah, yeah dude. Like he, well and even in the pocket, that one makes throws. makes some throws that are like out, like throwing out routes on time, like makes a lot of really good throws. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that, but yeah. it's just how it goes. Yeah, that's yeah. how the league is, and yeah. it's like the aura thing too. Like he shows up just in like, you know, Walmart outfit and shit. People are like, yeah, he can't be good. Yeah, no chance. What's wrong with Walmart these days? You know what I'm saying? I love Walmart. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this shirt is from Walmart. I'm not even kidding. But so I love Walmart. Nice. Shout out to Walmart. No, Walmart's. I mean, Shout out to underrated. Walmart. Best time zone to watch yeah. sports: <laughs> Eastern, Central, or Pacific. To watch. Yeah. Then well, play. Uh, maybe. S- is is it mountain in between Pacific and Central? Wow. Well, yeah, so two going, hours. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. I'm going mountain. Yeah, because Pacific is sometimes like. Too early. Like college football, like 9 a.m. Yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I would rather 10. The How mountain weird. time is perfect. Growing up as Midwest. So yeah. weird. I mean, the, yeah. I was I was Central time growing up. Yeah. Um, but then at Purdue is Eastern time. I think I do not like Eastern time. I like going to bed early. So, like, the Sunday night football games would start at 8, yeah. 8 20, 8 I couldn't watch Raiders games as a kid. No. You, they would be Monday night every year to start the year, and there was two Monday nights, and you're like, you, you have to go to bed. You were too yeah. busy yeah. watching the Lions suck anyways. I definitely was. I love the Eastern Times, but I'd rather start instead of starting it. I'm, instead of starting it, and then it's like what about nine play, o'clock. playing and watching. No, just watching. Just watching. Just watching. Just if you start the morning off nine o'clock, then that's your noon your noon games, like the Ohio State, the Big Ten games. I'd rather be twelve o'clock, and then you get the evening, and then you can fall asleep. It, you it got was, a weird gap of just no sports. The Eastern yeah. Time in college football is is cool. To, like the three thirty, like Alabama, yeah. like. Yeah, Tennessee games. Yeah, exactly. Those are sort of like Those half the fields. Really nice. It's like sunny. It's like right that. before. Yeah, and right then it gets the it gets dark. That is pretty sweet. But the best yeah. part of out here is, you like you go to a Raiders game and and then you're done. You can go out to dinner. You can go out. You yeah. can do whatever. I like that. You have you still have time to do shit as a spectator. It's yeah, love. I think that's the most important. Part. Spectator wise, I like college football on Saturdays Eastern Time Zone. But the NFL, I do I do like to. I mean, our said. Sunday night games are five fifteen. Like I can, like again, I like to sleep. Like I'd be sleeping by like ten thirty on a Sunday night football game. Yeah. Like on the, in the in Eastern time, you're still playing. You're <laughs> playing. You're like in the third quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite college win: the Music City Bowl OT win over Tennessee, or the Michigan State win? Music City Bowl for Music sure. City yeah. Bowl. Music. The Michigan State was a was, was Dobbs awesome. the quarterback? No, who's the quarterback in Tennessee? The Hendon Hooker. Hendon Hooker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah he 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 balled that game too. Yeah. Really. I'd be curious to see if he gets if he ever gets his. Uh, his time. I think so. He's yeah. a stud, dude. That, he, the last yeah. two years, really, he's a stud. Before he tore his ACL, he was going to be one of the top guys. I think he's going to step in once Goff is towards the end of his his run and be like a Jordan Love type deal. Yeah. Like year four, come in and he'll be ready to rock. Yeah. What do you think, really quickly, is the best way to learn this game? You know, the NFL 
game? Like, is it sitting behind great players? Is it getting thrown into the fire? You obviously got thrown into the fire. Yeah. Um, but you see guys like Pat Mahomes who sits for a year. Um, your hooker that we were just talking about, he's going to have years of sitting. Jordan Love sat for years. Like, Rogers. in your opinion. Yeah, Rogers. What I'm, do you think? Yeah, I think, I mean, there's he's been examples of both. Yeah, 100%. I think it's it's really hard to come in and play really well as a rookie. Um, so I think it's been, I think in the short term, it's definitely, I think it's beneficial to sit, I think. Yeah. Um, and to be able to sit and watch, like, um, like the odds of the Packers having those guys like that to be able to sit and watch. Like, there, it's it, insane. It tells me that there's definitely an advantage to sitting and watching a, a great player play and learn yeah. and mess up in practice before you have to go out there and, and play in a game. And, um, but at the same time, to get the, like, for me, uh, I was old because I did six years of older rookie. Like I'm happy I got to play right away. Yeah, 100. percent Like I I was in college. It, it benefited me. I didn't play until year three, and that was huge. That was what I needed to when I got to college. But now it's different. So it's it's situation by situation. But I definitely see the the benefit in sitting. Yeah, yeah. There's both. There's examples on both sides that work and don't work. And this stuff like Herbert came in right out the gate. Ballin'. He he was balling. Yeah. What C.J. Stroud does like C.J. Stroud comes CJ, in, yeah. looks like a seasoned vet. So I actually want to ask you: Do you feel like um, you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but do you feel like sometimes teams in uh, in the NFL like they move on from guys too quickly, like before they've had the chance to go through those trials and tribulations to learn to grow? Like it's a there's a learning curve. Yeah. And do you feel like sometimes the core, especially quarterbacks, they don't get enough time to really you know c- come into their own? I think uh, I think it's trending that way more and more. Yeah, yeah, I think, and it's it's so much of a what have you done for me lately league. Of course. Because because all that's invo- like it's there's so much money in it, and there's so much writing on the people's jobs and stuff. And I think it's not just quarterback. I think coaches too. There's a lot of times that coaches, yeah. um, like Frank Wright got fired this year, and after one, he didn't even make it a whole season. And I think, you know, years ago that one that happened. There's coaches that had records like him and. I mean, thank God the Lions stuck with Dan Campbell. Like mm-hmm. he didn't, yeah. It wasn't great the first year, and now they're one of the best teams in the league. And so I think there's – it's, again, a situation by situation, but patience is a, is a good virtue to have. But I understand why they don't. I understand why you want to have the guy right now because when there's other quarterbacks playing at a certain level in the league, everybody, every team wants that level. Yeah. And um, I think that it does take patience, but um, I do understand why, why fans and, and people would want, you know, right away to, to have the result. Definitely. I think it's a front office thing more than anything. Yeah. It starts up top because the owners have their own perspective of what's going on. And I feel like they just see what is going around around the league yeah. and they try to compare. Right. And they get impatient and they start, they have to blame somebody. So it's either the quarterback or the coach. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And the coaches, every year they get fired faster yeah. and faster. And then it puts more pressure on the coach. You're like, shit, my job's on the line. I got to do it, make a drastic change. You yeah. know what I mean? Compar- so I feel like it goes hand in hand. But the good organizations, the one that, the ones that do it the right way, I feel like it's no coincidence. You look at the Steelers. I mean, they've had their quarterback struggles, but like they had Big Ben for a yep. long time. Yes. They did it the right way, and they trusted the process and stuck with Pickett for two years, and he was struggling. You know what yep. I mean? They at least gave him chance after chance. Um, Patriots, same thing with Brady. Yeah, Bledsoe, they're like, all right, we're going to move on to this guy, give him a chance. He struggled early on and yep. ended up being a GOAT. So I think it's organizational, I think, more than anything, and not falling into the public, you know, pressure. That kind of. I think that's hard. It's hard because yeah. you, the the public is the one that comes to the games and who are supporting the team. and, and the, Yeah, and they matter. Um, Social media is so huge now. Yeah. Like, these dudes are billionaires. Yeah. They don't like losing. Oh. Period. And they hate they people the telling them they suck. Like, Other owners are like, y'all oh, fucking suck. Yeah. This dude sucks. They're like, fuck, I got to make a change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're being reactive instead of, you know, proactive. So now that the uh, the draft's done, right, you're going to see where all these quarterbacks have been placed. Yeah. Is there, is there a rookie quarterback that you're, you're excited to see and you think is going to do well? Ooh, that's a good. I mean, these guys are like studs. Like, yeah. all. The, I mean, I think at, at this level, everyone is, is really good, but some like watching. Caleb Williams playing colleges and like Jaden Daniels, all these guys are phenomenal at, at what they do. And so um, I think because I think because football is, is getting so big from a younger age, you get more exposure and you get, you know, seven coach seven better seven. seven on seven and in the high school, the stakes are bigger and then college, the stakes are bigger. And that yep. translates to the NFL. So I, I mean, I love watching the guys coming out. I think um, obviously, again, I'm, I'm more of a pocket pass or old school so i'm not i'm not like a lot of these guys and so it's fun for me to to watch them and to see to see what they can do um but um at the same time you know i i try to focus on myself and and make myself better but um it, there's really no 
as as much as I like to watch for entertainment, a lot of these quarterbacks, like when I'm watching film, you guys asked growing up, like, I mean, I love to watch Kyler Murray, but I can't do it. I can't right. do what Kyler yeah. does. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's he does things that I can't do. Um, but there are guys that you know I can I can model my game after that are going to make me better. Mm -hmm. And so um, normally when I'm to answer your question, I'm watching those guys for entertainment. And yeah. Just you think one of them's going to like you had to pick one who's going to have a, a blowout year. Um, to have a great year this year. Yeah, rookie season. Because you know how tough it is. Or who's going to have the best career? They're both. Because oh Michael you know, Penix is good, but he's not going to probably play. Yeah, for a while. Right? You, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. there's guys they do, like, they're going to be bigger for Or he can bench. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll do this year and then uh, career. I do, well, talking about, like, Jared Goff, I think of Jared Goff, and, like, he struggled so much his first couple of years yes. um, yeah. with, with the coach he had. Um, and then he, he gets to McVay's offense and balls. And so, I do think it's, I think it's the hardest position to critique and to yeah. evaluate coming out of college mm -hmm. in all of sports. It has to be yeah, because – there's so many guys you can look, and the time will tell in, in a year and five, ten years that guys were supposed to be this good. And, like, Lamar coming out, everyone thought he wasn't going to make it in the NFL. Yeah. Two-time MVP. Like, Literally. Um, so I'm not trying to dodge your question. No, just, it's tough. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> so um, hard. And I think it depends on the system. But I, I think those guys, that the, those top three guys are just so talented, I, I have a hard time thinking they won't make it work. I mean, the system and all that matters so much. Yeah. So much. Like Andy Reid, for, like for example, Patrick Mahomes, they thought that they were crazy for trading up and getting him. Not one Texas Tech quarterback has ever had success in the league because they're in that air raid, mm -hmm. throw the ball 70 times a game. Same with Ohio State. No, and then Mahomes ends up yeah. being best quarterback in the league. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, shit like that, it's almost impossible to predict. Have been can't miss guy, but I'm the lead. Yep. Yeah. Happens all the time. It, all the time. Same with like, we talked about this earlier off air, but like JJ McCarthy, like he's going to an actual good organization when you get picked that early a lot of times you're not going to an organization that's really suited to win right now yeah right? they or, lost that's yes. why they're picking there right yeah. and they don't have the pieces around it so you have to look in those perspectives too like yeah. he's got a good organization he's got a good head coach you know so yeah it's it's interesting it'll be interesting to see yeah. what they do and but then like that caleb was the first pick overall but now they have they drafted the the receiver from washington yeah. and they have keenan allen keenan allen <laughs> DJ, D D DJ Moore still, yeah, yeah. like so. It's hard to say all those guys when you sign them. So it's so situation by situation. There's a, I think people try to boil it down to like one factor, and there's a million factors that go into. There really this. is. Yeah. There really is, and it's it really comes down to the person. Yep. The guy who gets drafted, you can they could be the most squeaky clean, best dude, clean record and everything, but then they get some money, and you don't know how they're gonna react. Yep. You know what I mean? You can't yep. predict that. Yep. So. I feel like that might, you know, that it's makes it fun. Though. It makes it yeah, fun to see. Of I was going to never know. Yeah. Plus, the you games really played so much differently in the NFL. Oh, it's, like, it's from college. I can't even watch college football. I'm not going to lie. I don't watch college yeah. football really yeah. at all. Yeah. Since I've been in the NFL, I've watched only NFL. Yeah. I've watched maybe a couple college games a year, but it's just, not, it's so different. It's it so is. different. I used to be weighted towards college, and now it's oh, yeah. solely in the NFL. Yeah. NFL. Yeah. We watch it Saturdays, like because you're not gonna ever play Saturdays yeah. during the fall. I don't remember last time I watched full college. Kids. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> by God, they're blitzing off, <laughs> gambling on these 18 year old kids. Nothing worse <laughs> than the field goal kicker coming on to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. jog out to. You guys beat us on the walk off field goal, didn't you though? Yeah, yes, I think so. No. The kicker for the Patriots, Seriously? Chad Ryland, was the one who really? hit it. He transferred. He was at Eastern for a few years, and then he transferred to Maryland. The Hammer. Yeah. Yeah, the Hammer. Nicknamed Chad Ryan. For a few reasons, the Hammer. I bet you okay. gave him that nickname, didn't you? <laughs> the kicker. No, I don't. I yeah. I only played with him the for like a year. The Hammer. It's Chad Ryan. You didn't. Now you're going down a weird, yes, weird route. Let's just move on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is our next segment. Sean Greasy. I know where the golden part came from. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, no. Gold Jordan. Gold, yeah. New segment. We call it uh, Mount Rush. Uh, we asked everybody their Mount Rushmore, their position. So, in your opinion, who is your Mount Rushmore, your four greatest quarterbacks oh ever? Oh, my gosh, played? dude. In your opinion, not what other people say. Yeah, it could yeah. be your. It's 100% on you. Um, I'm going to go Tom Brady. Goat. Joe Montana. Second goat. Yep. And <sighs> Jared Rodgers. Oh, no. <laughs> Peyton Manning. Yes. And then four is like I want to say Drew Brees, my Purdue guy, um, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, there's like so many. We don't beat around the bush. Like I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> so gr like, very PR trained. That was very script. Um, out of here. That's 
I probably have to say Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Fuck, dude. God, I love this. He's the biggest Roger fan on the planet. Uh, so how guy. would when you guys do like your goat quarterbacks? Uh, who would you put? My goat. Yeah. No, your four. Your Mount Rushmore. My Mount um, Aaron. Uh, for sure. I'm gonna LeBron. Yeah, LeBron. Can I put LeBron in there? <laughs> From LeBron, the top. Drake. Drake. Quarterback. Drake. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm putting Aaron in there. I'm actually going to put Matt Stafford in there, um, just because. Oh, Rushmore. Yeah, that's balls. I, I so I love. I'm the biggest Stafford fan on the planet, but Mount Rushmore is crazy. But it's Hall just Famer. crazy because he like there was a stat was um and Stafford, he's got a ring. was at line was at Detroit. He didn't have like a, a hundred yard rusher and like he had in like a couple games his whole career. Yeah, like. Yeah. And it's just like, how do you evaluate somebody like that who's so good, but his team isn't isn't winning? He was throwing for five thousand yards the season before it was cool. Yeah, bro, he was. And doing and the he was doing the no look stuff too yeah, before that's it was, what I'm before it was cool. He's a pioneer. He is. He's a pioneer. When I think Mount Rush, I'm thinking just like obviously you got to win. Yeah. So when you say greatest, like is it is it winning Still or sad. is it no, talent? I'll let you no, you do your Mount Rush playing more. quarterback. Thank you. You can put LeBron in there if you want. That's not a good freak. Yeah. You got to put Tom in there. I. I didn't really love Tom growing up, um, but I've grown to respect the shit out of him yeah, over hated, time. I hated him, too. So you have to put him in there. Yeah. And then, um, dude, I don't know. The fourth, to me, is just ever-changing. Yeah. Right? You can sub guys in and out. Uh, it, it's probably really early to say it, and I'm going to get crucified for it. But I don't like to dig in the archives and pull old-school guys just because I think players now, I even think backups now, can do what those guys did back then. And that's no shade. I know what it's you're similar to the NBA. I know what you're gonna say. Just say it. It's Mahomes. I would put Mahomes on there. How not? He's got how many rings? I, saw, I thought you were going. Way I thought you were gonna say Dan Marino. No, I see. Like I didn't watch him. You know, I saw Johnny him and John Elway. The quarterbacks. Dan Marino is known as the guy that could just throwing the football was the best. Yeah. yeah. Like just straight throwing it. Yes. I would put Mahomes on the rush more. Yeah. yeah. It's hard not. To. Yeah. It's. I mean, it, it he's is. already. He's. On his yeah. Way. And I mean, he's already. I know they're all lots of modern guys. They pretty much put every modern guy on there, but. It's just the like I said, the game is so much better now. Guys are so much better. This, it's it's hard to not put them in there. That's it's like NBA. It's dude. such a hard argument, especially in the NBA, because the reason they're better now is because the technology, the nutrition, is every like. Who's they're to say bigger. if you didn't put one of the old guys in this and born now yeah. that he wouldn't be even better? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. So it's so hard to compare like LeBron to Michael because like Michael was smoking a cigar between game two and three in his locker. Yeah, and like now we know better that that is not. Like maybe Michael will still do it, but it was not like oh, that's yeah. not the best way to perform now. Right. And so all the money that's put into nutrition and the technology of weight lift, like all the things, that's why I think it's so hard to. Compare. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And the rules were totally different. Oh yeah, totally. You different. can't even you can't touch anybody. Well, there's no CPAs. I think you could literally murder now. people. And the final scores back then are like 84 to 82. Yes. And now they're like 130 to like 85 to 87. Yeah. Like every game. Yeah. It's unreal. A bunch of wats out there yeah. hooping. Yeah, it's changed. What? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's funny. Darian, when is right. it rush mail? Yeah, before we get down that nice little slippery slope, Rogan wanted to yeah, take us back down. to LeBron somehow, but yeah. yeah we'll do the it rush always mail. gets back to LeBron? Oh, um, yeah. Every time. Thank you. Every time. All right, rush mail. So uh, Condor Cartel submits some questions for us, uh, for you, um, and I'm going to riddle a couple of them off. Love the first. So I'm sure the name. How can I? Oh, Jacob DeSantos. Says, how can I grow a mustache like yours? It's not very hard at all. Actually, I think I think literally everybody can do this. It's shit, difficult not shit. knowing where he's at. Like we yeah. don't know what he's working with right yeah, now. Yeah, he could be. Yeah, he could be young and could be twelve. Uh, could be twelve and probably still could get what I get. But you say it's easy though, but people probably say that about the beard, and you're like, it's not that easy. That's true. That is true. You know, like, dude, I. I'm, I'm, I like it. the beard will just not, it won't. Have you come. tried anything? Yeah. Before? No, like, no, I, I no patch, no it. You can still patch his whole yeah. hand on this sort of dude. That's yeah. Right. Just keep you brushing. You have to shave every day. Yeah, just keep brushing. Uh, I will take beard, that, dude. dude. I will take that. Thank I think you. you look great. And I take yeah. your stash. Really? So we could figure something. This is cute. <laughs> Start cloning. We got something going. Here. Yeah. I used to so have a moment. soul patch and a must. <laughs> That's terrible. I started out with a guy. It was fucking horrible. I looked like the Pirates of the Caribbean. Is soul I mean, patch like the chin patch, or is it like this? It only this thing grew here. Oh yeah, I grew here and here. My sides would feet? not grow, but I. So just did you shave, shave right here? Did it come from here? It came from like. <laughs> okay, so here. it came from all the way from. Hundred percent, and it was just stash, and I just had to just shave. They're just yeah. like shave it every day. Yeah. Even when you don't have nothing, just shave, 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 and all of a sudden it just started growing. Is that what it is? Yeah. Now I'm with it with the electric razor, an actual like. Uh, I got to use no, a razor. Back in the day, I was just like a, okay. Yeah. I'll never put an actual razor on my face. Yeah. 
See, I never was. Never. I, I'm, yeah. I have my yeah, my electric trim. Yeah. You look like you take a razor. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. It's electric. But if it if it if it means I'll grow a beard, I'll do the other one. I'll do whatever. It's manscaped every day. Yeah. I'm telling you, it makes a difference. Right. I couldn't grow a beard. I was patchy. I was all fucked up like him. But <laughs> damn, long way. This is my good side. Oh, oh, that's why you sit over there. Oh. Yeah, this is exactly <laughs> why I sit over here. Yeah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> we got Max Solomon wants to know what's your favorite quarterback growing up. Yeah, it was Tom Brady. Brady, yeah. Brady. I mean, come on. Nice Dom dot ibr wants to know what are you working on to improve next season. Um, a lot of things. Um, I think trying to take like we talked about earlier, more more holistic route. Um, at looking at my myself completely, you know, mentally, physically emotionally um you know it takes a lot to to play in the nfl and so if your mind's not in it you could have you know work out as much as you want but it take it really takes everything the autumn ju wants to know if you had a walkout song like fighters what song would you choose yes Ooh. Ooh. wow that's a great question she go the country no thunderstruck no not thunderstruck no mm. No. <laughs> so she's gone country <laughs> it'd probably be yeah some chris stapleton honestly really chris white stapleton. horse yeah white horse maybe white yeah, that's great yeah. going dude okay it's a great who's song. the go go oh, no, you oh, go country artist jason aldean i do not like i lo I, i'm sure jason aldean's a great guy i do not like his music bro oh. You guys, Jason Aldean people? No, I don't listen to country. At He's all. big, Jason Aldean. He listens to Morgan Wallen. I like, country. I listen I like Morgan Wallen. Morgan Wallen. Couple of his who, who's, your, who's your guy? Mine's Neela's fault. I would say Jason Aldean, which I know is hurting your soul, but I could spin it. And uh, I, I love like Morgan Wallen, Luke Holmes now. Luke Holmes. What about you guys? Luke Holmes, ZB band. Yep. Big ZB band. ZB band. ZB band's good. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> oh! That is the GOAT. <laughs> who's yours? Did you say who yours is? Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton. Yeah, he's Stapleton. my favorite. He's coming to, I think he's at Legion like December 7th next year. All right, let me know. Oh, right. Season, bro. Oh, so that's all unfortunate. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, I only got, I got hip to it from the summertime. But golfing, yeah, I can't play, I can't play my, the playlist on a golf course at yeah. the time. So, you know, on the boat, you got to play something like you're doing a jam it. So, yeah. I got a question. Who's your favorite rap artist? Shabs. Oh, Yes. Mm. Mac Miller. That's a good question. Did you say Mac Miller? <laughs> <laughs> um, Eminem. I probably, I mean, I probably know uh, the most Drake songs. That would be the Thank you. Bro. Bro. This is. Everyone I know would be Drake. I'm trying to. You were earning. You shouldn't even ask. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we, you're, we, you're earning the Brogan support. Yeah, I don't, but I don't listen to you. Just as you're much etching anymore. yourself up on Brogan still. Yeah, yeah, you're earning your second visit onto the rush <laughs> every step of the way right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's uh, all we got for the rush mail. Nice. Yeah. What's the rush is up next? Let's what's do it. The rush? Yeah. So, what's the rush? Um, you obviously went the walk on route in college. We hit on that. It's well documented. But um, when do you know when to bet on yourself? Is the question. That's a great question. Um, it was like the, it was definitely a shot in the dark when I decided to go to Purdue. Like, like I was, I was going to play division three ball and, um, decide to go to Purdue and like, it wasn't like, Oh, let me change my mind and let me go have a chance to compete at Purdue. It was like, I'm just going to go and we're going to see what happens. And I knew I needed a couple of years to develop and kind of be behind the scenes. Um, and so I did, I didn't play for my first two years and didn't even travel or anything like that. And so I just needed to get in the strength program. Honestly, I was, I was like 160 pounds my senior year Damn. of high school. Yeah. Yep. Like it was bad, dude. Um I know this right. I couldn't even like Sorry. talk about PBJ like twice a day, every like yeah. everything. My poor mom and dad trying to make me some milk, food. gallons it, of milk. Doesn't matter. Just every just, just it feels <laughs> thin. Wasn't so working. it was it was a shot in the dark and I'm like it could have, just as easily as it worked out, it could have not worked out. Um but I think it was for me it was like if I could get into a good program and um, get myself in a good situation. And I was lucky to be like in the offense that we threw the ball basically every play. And so yes. it's not, the big 10 is not like that. The big 10 is like running the ball and boring offense. And so I was lucky. I got put in a great spot. So things worked out, um, but they could have easily not. So right. <laughs> yeah. It's, was there ever a time where you felt, man, I might leave like the clock's ticking, you know, you have X amount of years left. Like, did that ever cross your mind or was like, Hey, I'm going to battle this out. Always. Yeah. Um, it got to the point, honestly, at the end of my second year, I still hadn't played and I was still like fifth on the depth chart. And I was like, to be honest, I, I could see myself, I still love football, but I'm like, I could see myself graduating here and moving on 
without ever playing. Yeah. And and then I I met um, my my now wife and just had a lot of things off the field that I I loved about Purdue. Great connections and, and family that I was like I'm just gonna stay here. And then I got to play and then yeah. it, it it all worked out. Amen. Yeah. Is, did your wife play volleyball? She or? did. Who's yeah. a better athlete, you or your wife? She was Miss Indiana Volleyball coming out of high school. Yeah. So, and I was a walk-on, so she yeah. was like, so she was, <laughs> we were so different. And now you're an NFL starting quarterback. Yeah, she, we were so different. Oh, like, wow. it, it, in our recruiting processes, we're so different. So, yeah, yeah. she was she was a stud. She's throwing all of her letters she was getting out there for you. like Literally, bro, guess. like, Dang everybody. Yeah, she got, like, offered sophomore year of, of high school. I was, like, 120 pounds. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, was just, <laughs> it was so, so different. Yeah. So she was de- by far the better athlete. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love it. That's how Rachel was. She still talks shit because she has a Mac ring, uh, oh, we soccer, and four year starter, all type of shit. She's yeah, she's still with she, us here and yeah. all this loves throwing it out there. You gotta marry the athletes. Bro. Yeah, so yeah, yeah welcome to the fam. Yeah, of course, no doubt. Well, shit, bro. We appreciate you coming on. Of course. Um, excited to see what you uh, continue building in your career, bro. You're an awesome teammate. Um, one thing I'll say, there's been a lot of young quarterbacks and vet quarterbacks that I've gone against in scout team and they didn't take uh take the heat but you <laughs> did you didn't never said a word never complain kept showing up and I knew from the start that you were going to be special so appreciate that uh, your journey's just starting bro and I'm excited to be your teammate and continue continue building our thing so appreciate you coming on oh, bro. likewise learn a lot from you yes sir thank you appreciate you guys thanks guys thanks, thanks for having we appreciate me appreciate it yeah, oh yeah throw the stashes out um also big shout out to Giuseppe and eight lounge and Resort World for, uh, you know, giving us a great place to have our show. So we appreciate you guys. Walk up in the play. Yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like. I'm really him, oh God. Walk up in this play. Yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like. I'm really him.